you know, talk into the mic. What's happening here, <laughs> Rufat? Are you gonna do any? Oh, d- we're doing. T- uh, we're testing levels. No, we're just starting. Oh, okay. <laughs> Usually, a host comes on now, and is like, "You're at the uh, guys. We uh, we're banging people <laughs> podcast." Wow, and- that was so specific. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. What are they gonna do? Fight me? <laughs> They'd win. <laughs> they would. <laughs> this is not a joke. I've actually been uh, abused before by a girlfriend. Oh, um, I'm yeah. sorry. I got hit a couple times, but I it, it was so. Uh, I, I went to my therapist about. Like I just uh-huh. told him about it. He's like, you should take this serious. And I'm like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> you should take it. No. Boys can be abused. No, but it wasn't like the hits weren't good. What? <laughs> You're not only doing it if they're leaving a mark. <laughs> That's when I have trauma. But w- before that, not at all. <laughs> I want, I want to, I want like the Al Green treatment. I want like hot grits. Hot grits? Dumped on me while I'm bathing or something. You know, like something that'll like really get me going. <laughs> Get you going out. I mean, I feel like that's, I feel like most women, because uh, especially when it comes to men, like fight abusing men, w- m- women have to go the home alone route. Ah, uh, I see. Right? I see. They got to do like the, the swinging iron. <laughs> <laughs> The more creative route. Yeah, you yes. can't just go hands yeah, on. The flying paint cans. No. Of course. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I got hit with before I came here. Yeah, so. flying paint yeah, cans. I was chasing a 12 year old. <laughs> what? No. Oh, come on. <laughs> I believe that kid was eight. Macaulay Culkin was like eight. Yeah. Just uh, <laughs> 12 is like, oh. <laughs> For some reason, 12 is more creepy than eight. Because 12, it's like, as a girl, it's just like, oh, that's when they're starting to all, get their periods yeah. and all that stuff. And yeah. it's just like, right. can, we re- can we redact that? <laughs> no, nope, <that>. absolutely not. <laughs> he loves children. <laughs> Rufat, hi. How how are you? Welcome to the podcast. Is that what you were hoping for? Yeah. Yep. That's all I wanted. I just wanted to. Instead, I'm just like, talking to the microphone. <laughs> Thanks for doing it. I'm happy you're here. Thank you for having me. I we, feel honored. You feel honored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm uh, I'm glad you're here. Uh, we were just talking previously about your fashion choices, mm-hmm. and you're the most fashionable person I know. Oh, thank you. Yeah, That's, uh, you're always very hip. Uh, thank you, thank you. Actually, uh, we're on. Can I say where we're at? Yeah, sure. So, <laughs> no, it's <a> secret. <laughs> <laughs> so this this street in particular is actually when it comes to fashion is very special to me. Mm-hmm. There's that Japanese store that I just bought those New Balances from. Okay, cool store. Mm-hmm. I think the name of it is called Nef- Nefethines or something like that. Okay, like a lot of I have friends who have like showcased work there, but also on Thirty Eighth and Eighth is where I used to work for Telfar, who's a big fashion guy. He his bags sell out. His studio was there when he first, not when first started, but he like, be, you know, before he really got popping and his bags started selling out, he was downstairs in a in a basement with uh, what I believe to be uh, Chinese factory workers. <laughs> <laughs> was there air conditioning? It was weird down there. It was very weird. So it was a sweatshop. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I've never even heard of Telfar. What is no? that? He uh, all the uh, it's it's the bags with the T and the C. It has a T and a C, and they sell out a lot. That's oh, okay, it. yeah. Do you have a bag? So when when they f- when I was working for them, I would get free bags because, nice. but they weren't selling out then. Yeah. So I gave one to my girlfriend at the time. She lost it, <gasps> and now she's an ex now, but mm-hmm. re bought it. Oh, yeah. So now she has to buy them. Yeah, <laughs> suck it. <laughs> I'll give you grits. <laughs> we're on good terms. We're on good terms. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah. That one, that X, we're on good terms. Oh, okay. Not the okay. Well, the X before that, or the X after that. Uh, not bad terms. Just rather not speak. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. You're better, better apart, mm-hmm. as they say. But you are very fashionable. Oh, you're back, very fashionable. Yeah, got I got it. No, no, it's okay. It's you okay. Got to reel me in sometimes. <laughs> I get a little like very, like very, like and I want to tell you this story. And then- <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> this is a storytelling podcast. 
Thank you, though. Thank you for... Yeah, you know, very fashionable. I made fun of you about your sling bag, your mm-hmm. fanny pack situation. This, I had a Supreme... Yeah, the yes. Supreme bag. This yeah. was like years ago. And I was mm-hmm. like, you want a fucking wimp wearing a fanny pack? What are you, a divorced dad? Yeah. And then literally six months later, everybody and their mom had a sling bag, including myself. And then I stopped wearing it. And then you stopped. Yeah. Now I don't know what you're wearing. Now you're just walking around with... I, bags of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I like hardware. Uh, I like hardware totes, like totes from New York hardware stores. What? Yeah. Like a you tin? See, you want to see mine? Yes, you have to show right. me. Gar- Garber has some really good ones. All right, so it's just, that's it. It's just that's a tote bag. That's not functional but at all. High. Yeah, it is. You, you put, look, it, it, it has my socks This in is here. literally just a tote bag. <laughs> it is a bag for groceries. No, but it's cool because it's like high quality, right? Like, feel that. Feel that. That's a high quality. It is thick. That's a, it's thick. And then, you know, it got this cool, cool font. Established 1884 back before people had rights. (laughs) Yeah, you would have not been able to go into that store. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But now you got it. I I got it now. Now it's a statement. (laughs) Why does why do people put that on? Why are people happy about being established in times where they had where other people had no rights? Because clearly, like if you were established in as a hardware store, you were doing a lot of uh, well, maybe in the north it's a little different. The South, it's very bad. The South is like, oh, well, you didn't allow black people in your store. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, yeah, no, there, I mean. I mean, even in the 1950s, Harlem was pretty bad. There's a reason why Malcolm X was marching down the street saying he'd kill the cops. Yeah. I mean, you're right. (laughs) You're talking to someone who is white as the driven snow. But uh, yeah, that makes sense. But I mean, I think it's just to prove longevity. Like we've we stuck around through the depression. We stuck around uh, through this. That's why our products are so good. That's uh-huh. why we got a thick ass bag. Yeah, you know what I mean. I love it. Yeah, you like a thick ass bag. I like a, I love and now you bag. wear weird pants sometimes, and I just don't question it. You know, my style has gotten, <laughs> especially on stage. I don't like to show my tattoos, so I wear like long sleeve shirts. I try to go no logo, and <laughs> no logos. Why? I hate because. Comedians have ruined fashion on stage. They're so poorly dressed. They're <laughs> ill-fitted. And then when they think they can dress, they logo up. And now you have no dignity. <laughs> this is a wild stance. <laughs> this is, I've never Why heard this Why is it a wild before. stance? I mean, it's crazy that you- They logo are, up. You... They logo up. You get one special and now you logo up, huh? <laughs> You go, you're, you start flaring. You had one special on Comedy Central that nobody watched. And now everyone needs. Okay. <laughs> Shots fired. Yeah, to like a thousand people. <laughs> Why don't you like to show your tattoos? You have good tattoos. Um, I just don't like to, I don't like for people to assume anything about me when I'm on stage. Oh. I don't want them to be like, oh, that's the, oh, look at oh, this next guy's got tattoos. Well, I like it when they assume something about me because then I like yeah. to flip it on its head. I like to go a little bit, you know. Yeah, a little stealth mode? Yeah, a little stealth. I also I'm a big I'm a big fan of um, you know, uh George Carlin. Mm-hmm. So, he always did New Balance's jeans, black shirt. Not saying that like, yeah, I mean, I just think it's like cool. Like him, Willie Nelson, I like the way Willie Nelson dresses on. Oh. I'm I'm going for like who I'm going to be in 30 years. Less <laughs> about who I am now. Okay. All right, that seems um uh what's that called? But the world might end, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Just like I the one I'm like it's not long-winded, it's um longevity, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's thinking. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I uh the- I'm live by the day. See your pants, baby. Let's doing, see what happens. You're doing well though. You're doing well. You're doing well. You're doing so we're do- well. We're let's high five. We're doing great. From 739 to here, baby. I know. We're doing it. <laughs> So this is um, about drinking, and you uh, don't really drink. <laughs> I've I've drunk. I've yeah. drunk. I've drunk. Okay. Um, when but, was the first time you ever had alcohol? Okay, me. Uh, I mean, like, just like different. I, I I can't remember like the first time, but I know like when. I can tell you like an early. Like, yeah. Okay. Uh, Scott. This kid named Scott brought. Brotsky, right? Oh, good. His, Say his full name so his, we can get sued. That's good. 
<laughs> don't you have technology here? The, the, there's 90 cameras. You can't bleep out a fucking name. We have to bleep it on every single camera. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Scott Brosky. Scott. You bitch. All right, Scott Brosky. You're now a friend of the pod. Okay. Yeah. Don't sue us. We have no I don't no know money. where he is. I don't know what he's doing. I just know he, he, we were young. He had a paper route. His dad was never home. And there was alcohol. All right, he's and now so a U.S. senator. <laughs> we would be, <laughs> we'd be throwing back peach schnapps. Mm -hmm. And I just talked, I think, to Sean Patton about this. Yeah, like we were doing. He was also doing peach schnapps. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't. I, I don't, mean, yeah, I, I've had some peach schnapps. They're tasty. Alcohol is alcohol, and yeah. I was just like, whatever. Let's get drunk. How old were you? Eleven. Eleven? Get yeah. drunk at eleven? I got drunk at eleven. Goodness, what'd you do when you were drunk? Just kind of like. Again, nobody was there, so like, kind of just like fell asleep on the couch, or just like went outside to the woods. This is we were. I was living in Erie at the time, Erie, Pennsylvania. Oh, I've been to Erie. Yeah, I'm I've been to that magic and comedy. Uh, oh, is it Junior's last laugh? Junior's am I allowed? To, am I allowed to say names? Yeah, 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 yeah. That guy's a psychopath. I heard. Okay, don't fucking say that. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> You just when did we become so <laughs> guarded as comedians? We're so guarded and it's not it the, the fact is it's not the good type of guarded. It's it's the it's the you know what type of it's like no go on go on the podcast and say hot takes. Do your hot takes. This but, isn't a hot but take then, podcast. But what about personal <laughs> what about personal vendettas being cleared on air? Do it we need to tell podcast. the truth about people. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Juniors, when I worked it, it was lovely. <laughs> Did you do comedy there? I'd rather visit my grandma when I'm there. <laughs> I don't want to perform for those fucking people. It was nice. It was right before the pandemic started, so there was like 12 people in the audience. It was the weekend that everything got shut down. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And we did an escape room. <laughs> we were like, well, this is, it seems like a thing where we touch everything. That's good. Yeah. I just feel like some people don't deserve laughter. Okay. <laughs> did you not like where you grew up? Mm, I liked where I grew up, but I got a chance to experience the suburbs and the inner city of it. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I always felt a little in, not inferior but like i just yeah a little inferior when i was in the suburbs i went to suburban school for mm -hmm. like three years while i was there like yeah. a middle school so i just was like it was weird people had snack closets and like snack i just closets. feel like I, you know you, you it, when, when you grow up around you know certain things for so long that when you get around other people you're just like oh this is weird you know is it like a wealth gap thing or a yeah you yeah. know like they were getting like sushi for lunch and stuff like that mm. from wegman's <laughs> Yeah, you know, the rich. They shop at Wegmans. I thought that, that was pretty fucking... <laughs> I also want to... Uh, I have a problem with Wegman. Uh, <laughs> he's a fucking... No, those fuckers will sue. They will sue. You keep that name out of your goddamn mouth. I didn't say Wegmans. Wegman. <laughs> Steve used to be a, a cart boy at Wegmans. Okay. He would go pick up all the carts and put them away. He hated it. <laughs> he I'm hated sure Wegmans. he was... He's a sturdy guy. He's Steve? low to the he's low to the ground. That's people. Those make the best running backs. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll let him know. He weighs one hundred and thirty pounds. Same, same. <laughs> oh my goodness, I could carry both of you. I love being women's goal weight. <laughs> You have the thigh gap I'll never have. Because <laughs> my penis is small. <laughs> you have a small dick. Who knows? <laughs> I do have a joke. I, I have been starting to do uh, like a small dick bit that I really like. Uh -huh. um, and 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 I and in it, you know, I'll stop and be like, this makes it sound like I have a small dick, doesn't it? And I'm like, oh, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I like the mystery up there. Like I said, I wear the long sleeve. I don't show the tattoos. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, you'll never know the size. I think you you should show the tattoos. Uh, sometimes I do, and it doesn't like I it it does didn't really affect anything. I think like once I went up it. Mm -hmm. um, that that club in uh that we go to sometimes the comedy cellar yeah the comedy and um 
<laughs> now you're just afraid to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> that club, that's very good. <laughs> but I, 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 I usually like, yeah, especially there. I, like, I just like wearing long sleeve. The AC is really good, and all their the comics, the AC, everything's so great. And um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where was that about juniors, huh? <laughs> <laughs> they had good AC at juniors too. I'll tell you that. Uh, <laughs> but no, I went. I went. I went without the long sleeve for once, and it didn't really affect anything. Yeah, no, just yeah. be your authentic self. But that's the thing. That is my authentic self. Is I like the long hiding sleeve. who you are. <laughs> no, I, I like I, I like a, a a sweatshirt and uh, shorts. I, I like a, I like mm-hmm. a, I like a, a, you know, middle school coach type of. Okay, me too. Of, you know, <laughs> I hear you. I am a middle school coach. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so growing up in Erie, taking schnapps at eleven. Teach schnapps, yep. That's crazy. Doing Are you still it. friends with that guy? No, 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 no. I just remember he had a brother that was really good at hockey. Nice. But yeah, he was. It was. He's like one of those kids that just like you know would show you porn, would get oh, you drunk. Boy. Had the paper route, you'd so you'd sleep over his house, and then like at four a.m. we'd wake up and like he'd have us tossing papers with him. Um, oh, you know, be pellet guns, a lot of pellet guns. Oh, this guy sounds fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Now that was another vice you said you had. What guns? No, <laughs> <laughs> pellet guns. No, it was a different kind of pellet. Uh, <laughs> masturbation. Oh, okay. Goodness. That was a weird. <laughs> no, you said looking at porn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that well, where no, you started? Asked me, you asked me like what vice I would have. No, uh-huh. no, it started even before that. What? Um, yeah, yeah. I Did think... your little dingy work? Yeah. <laughs> since I was, I think like since I was nine, I've been. What? Yeah, I started everything early in life. That sounds very young. Yeah. Fonzie, when did you start getting boners? Maybe like 10 or 11. What? Yeah. That seems crazy that yeah. little boys can get boners that young. We were boning up. Oh, my God. <laughs> that seems insane. Because girls are like, what is sex at 10? You know what I mean? They don't even know that they have private parts. They just know that I can't show this to my uncle. That's it. But yeah, if you had to ask me like. Thank you so much. That was a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would you say like a, a, a uncle joke or something? Oh, fucking never mind. Okay. <laughs> Just go. Go on with the story. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, let's see. Yeah, no, I, I I feel like if you had to ask me like one vice that I still carry, probably be just like jerking off. That's it. Do you do it every day? No, not every day, but. Well, that's not really vice then. You're not doing it in the closet of a fucking gas station. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Oh, sounds like you got a handle on it. <laughs> but I was trying to think of like places I have done it where it was like a little, you know. Where? Okay, you know what? Since since honesty is since I'm <laughs> trying to be this honest, open, authentic self yeah. that shows tattoos. There we go. <laughs> the bathroom at work. <laughs> <laughs> Which works. Just need to release it sometimes. Like the comedy cellar? No. <laughs> Those bathrooms yeah, in are that bathroom small. downstairs, the McDougal. One. <laughs> there, I was like, that's so small. And yeah. everybody would know that you're fapping. <laughs> yeah. Is that why I haven't been getting <laughs> <laughs> at work? Like at at the, the 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 what's it called? No, no. This is not recently. Okay. Like, uh, back like you know. <laughs> Someone's Some not being ago. authentic. <laughs> no, like, five years ago. Five years ago. No. Okay, that's still too old. Um, no, I'm joking. Yeah, I'm whatever. joking. I don't. I it was, was a, never... it was a what's it called? It was a, you know like the ones a nice lock. You know they lock the door or whatever. Okay, yeah, as long as the door right. locks. You know. You know, like you know when it's the single like yeah, like, yeah on like a floor with you know. It's private. Like a business building. A business building. <laughs> I only jerk off in business buildings. <laughs> <laughs> That's the be, real vice. I have to be in a business building. <laughs> uh, I like how honest I'm being. I like this. What are you not on? I've always c- considered you a very honest person. Ah. Uh, <laughs> No, I don't know when I'm not. I, okay. Usually I'm pretty honest. You told me you like feet, which to me is insane. Oh, that's like in the first minute on stage, <laughs> I let people know that. That's wild to me. Why do you think that's wild? Feet? Yeah, it's uh, like I think there's an, there's <laughs> articles, scientific studies that show that it's like a biological thing that most, it's like a, it's a popular fetish. It's such a boring fetish. I mean. It's, it's such a boring fetish. It's me. 
It's all <laughs> over. It's p- some of the most popular sites are, you know, there's feet everywhere. <laughs> I grew up hating feet. Like I would wear like socks to the beach. I hated my feet so much. <clears throat> I find with women, women don't necessarily, that's not a fetish for them because like, you know, men don't groom and, mm-hmm. you know, and they might feel inferior if they don't have pretty women f- like feet. Okay. You know, so yeah, it might yeah. it might not be a thing for women, but I think for men. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just when I got to my 30s, that's when I was just like, you can see my feet. Okay. Like literally, I just oh god. But I also played soccer, so my feet were always fucked up. Yeah. They would get like crunched uh, all the time. Those are the sacrifices you make to be, <laughs> you know, the next Rapino. <laughs> Rapino. 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 <laughs> But she, I appreciate she married the, the Sue pre- Bird, right? Yes, she yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate are, the effort. Yeah, big ups to Sue Bird right now. Sue She's Bird. killing it in the she's semifinals. Great. Yes, she's yeah. doing great. Look at that. I'm a, Look at you, you fucking me. feminist. I know. You Look tiny little feminist. <laughs> 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 okay, so you're, you're drinking schnapps. What were you like in high school? In high school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were you like? Ooh, this was middle school. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was. I told you I was eleven. I know. I know. What was that like in high school? I don't know how old high Not, schoolers are. <laughs> I wasn't that at all. I was totally different. I was a Christian. I was saved. What? Yes, I was. Um, you know, by the time I got to my senior year in high school, I was like the the head of the Christian club, the head what? of the head of Future Business Leaders of America, Homecoming King. Lead anchor on our uh, news show. Yeah, I was like Homecoming King. I see. I see yeah, that. Really. I can see that in you. Very and a much. virgin. I won. I won Homecoming King as a virgin. Yeah, that seems. I. Th- that's the weird thing about my life is I took this. Everything happened so fast early on mm-hmm. that when I got to Florida and started living with my dad, I, by my own, you know, uh, choice join the church like on my own really That's why people are like did you grow up christian no i i myself was like it's time to strap up and get holy <laughs> <laughs> i've lived too much of a life how did your dad feel about that uh he did i mean my it's so hard to get my dad's attention he doesn't care I, oh really I, you have to literally pink floyd album cover set yourself on fire what yeah <laughs> for him to be like oh what <laughs> Why was he not paying attention? Was he working a lot? Uh, we didn't have any AC, so uh, we were living in Florida. Didn't have any AC, so he was working. He just wasn't making a lot of money, mm. you know. Okay. Yeah, he's like a entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nobody tells you about that side of Gary V when the Gary V thing goes south. Gary V, what's <laughs> yeah, like you know, like being an entrepreneur doesn't really like work out for you and your kids in a hot house. <laughs> <laughs> Joining know? the Christian club. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus will save me because daddy ain't. Dude, I remember there would be nights where it'd be so hot, I'd be praying to God to make it rain and just like nothing. And I can't believe I still kept believing in the fucker. Also, God, too. I have a problem with that dude. Okay, that one's fine. Junior. <laughs> <laughs> Let that one out. But the, but the comedy, he's Christian. That's not, He's not a psychic. He's just Christian. I heard that guy's Christian. That's why that club is really clean. You did clean over there? Mm-hmm. You went clean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do clean. <sighs> Look at you selling out. I do clean all the time. Yeah? Yeah. I could never. I, I have 20 minutes of uh, PG that I can do. Is this why I'm not? You gotta have at least five. Syracuse, <laughs> Syracuse, funny <laughs> phone. <laughs> Great club. Great club. <laughs> I'm burning my bridges before yeah. I even get any, huh? <laughs> you gotta have a little, a little clean. I, I mean, yeah, I can go clean. I've done, I've, I've done. You like, definitely could. I, I have a friend who's still, a, a, who's a very popular U- Christian YouTuber, and he was performing at a church, and he, I did, I did like six minutes at a church. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was some material that I still do now. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I can, yeah, I can go yeah, clean. Yeah. I, I just don't it. like the inauthentic. I don't like the inauthenticity of like being like this. Don't, don't you, don't it's you? Just when, joke choice. Yeah, but don't you when you go when you go to see somebody, you want to be like, I want to hear some wild shit. That's your taste. You can be your authentic self and just but talk be clean? about yeah, talk about something else. You have your point of view. You can have a point of view on anything. 
I have a point of view on these curtains. I have a point of view on that fucking. Yeah, but why you, is that painting okay, there? It's well, a picture have, of nothing. I don't know. I I performed at a place where they're building a uh, a city. Okay. Like it's like you know you've done these tech shows sometimes. Building a city? Yeah, they're building a city. Okay, I don't. Maybe I shouldn't talk. I don't know. They paid me, and so. Well, but, if they already paid. But, you, but who I told cares? them I'd stab them in their hearts if things went south. What? Like you know, if like if if the, if we got low on resources in this nation, I'd they'd be the first people I'd stab in the heart and like, you know, like. What are you talking about? <laughs> like I'm saying, like this if, is a wild if things tangent. Went, if things went, what I'm saying is that like that was my pure authentic self on stage. I wasn't gonna like work clean. I wasn't gonna like. I was I went on stage and the first thing I said was like, look, I appreciate you guys for booking me and you guys all work in tech and I see the way that you look and I see your girlfriends and I just know that like a lot of comics came up here and pandered to you and were like, oh, this is so cool where you got we perform in this building. I know that I'm not on your side. I am not one of you. I will stab you in your heart. How did the set go? Went great. That's great. They, they, yeah, we ended up talking. Uh, w- one of the guys came up and talked to me about, uh, you know, like the future of stuff and uh, mm-hmm. how things are going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it went well. But that's just that, that's the thing is like, yeah, I don't I don't know if someone was just like, don't curse. I get it. I get why you're telling me not to curse. It's so easy not to curse. It it is easy not to curse. It's also more creative. But you know what's curse. hard? What? It's like doing what someone tells you to do. Oh my god. <laughs> that's the I'm a woman. That's literally how I was raised. <laughs> it's not the cursing. It's the you telling me to do something and me knowing I have you could, liberty over my own life. You sound could have like a libertarian right now. You sound now? insane. Oh my you sound god. like a crazy fucking person. But I love it. I love it. But also I think you could still say that same thing that you said to those people. And just not say, I would stab you in the fucking heart. You could just be like, there's no way we would have been friends. I will burn you at the stake? No, no, no. When, if the apocalypse <laughs> comes, a, uh, you're I'll the first z- ones to go. <laughs> That's all you have to say. You're the first ones to go. If it were up to me, I read my, I'm read i leading my colony. You're the first ones to go. Yeah, but they need descriptive language. No, they don't. How, how are they going? Did they? <laughs> 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 you gotta tag up this joke. I mean, it's how also... are they going? Where are they going? <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna send them there? Jesus, maybe you're just thinking about it too much because you're a sociopath. <laughs> you're not the first person to say that. <laughs> you have more empathy for those shoes that you just bought than you do those tech people. Those are made in America. <laughs> those shoes are made in America. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Okay. So we we got <laughs> King of the Christian. We literally have just gotten to high school. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm cri- I'm Christian. I'm super Christian. Christian. Super I'm Christian. speaking in tongues. I've I'm rebu- speaking in tongues. Yeah, I went to a pen I started off like, you know, seeker friendly, youth pastor, guitar type of church, and then I veered off into like more of a Pentecostal type of thing. Jeez. Yeah. How long did that last? Until I was like maybe like twenty one, and how did it, how does that end? I just stopped believing. You just stopped believing. Yeah. Like, did something click? Like, did you see something? I think or... I just watched like a George Carlin clip, and I think like he kind of voiced every like uh, he voiced every kind of like question or doubt I ever had that I was too scared to like say out loud. Mm-hmm. That's it. Okay. And like once you hear something, you can't unhear it, and yeah. then now like sticks with you was that a hard pivot no i just kind of did it you just left you I didn't leave left. like your whole friends and uh some people i'm still friends with mm-hmm. um but mm, yeah whatever i didn't care were you a rapper yeah i was a rapper a christian rapper I, no i was christian and then I, after that i was not a christian rapper i was like just regular rap and opening up for you know uh, in college, I opened up for like, you know, Mac Miller, Wiz Khalifa. What? Big Sean. I, I, that's how I got to New York is I opened up for Big Sean and I made some good money. Yeah. You were and a little rapper? I was rapping. You're a tiny little Hair, rapper boy. Warner, Warner Brothers. I was here. I, like I was a, the like some friends of mine, they got signed. So we were like had a little studio in their like corporate building and we yeah. were doing stuff over there. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, I was doing stuff. That's yeah, very cool. Stuff. 
Now I had no idea. Now it's kind of cool because, like, uh, you know, I I left all of that. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm always leaving stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always turning away. Uh, and now I'm doing this, and mm-hmm. you know, it's gone. It's gone pretty well. Did you just fall out of love with rapping? No, it was like the thing of like getting older. Yeah, you know, like I wanted to like. I think comedy allows you the f- not freedom because there's no freedom. Uh, but it gives you like the opportunity to be a writer, mm-hmm. be a performer, yeah. be 50 and not have to worry about, I don't know, being braggadocious on a track and saying you're still in the club. Yeah. But then people and then always be weary when when people tell rappers like, but there's Jay-Z and he's like, he's a billionaire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course he's still rapping like mm-hmm. or he can. Oh, I guess that's true. What about true? Kanye? Yeah, we're talking. You're bringing up legends. I'm talking about regular like. Yeah, rappers. there's no like no rappers making it at 45. There's an age disparity in rap. There's mm-hmm. some rappers that are older now, but like you know, they're they're like hardcore rappers. Yeah, like you know they've been like shot in the face, literally. Like Conway the Machine, his, his face is like drooped. Jeez. Yeah. Oh my goodness, what were you rapping about? I think it was more like a. Uh, little little introspective I, that's when i started i think like the last thing i released was like i was like really depressed and Aww. i was like uh mm-hmm. you know i wanted that honesty that comes with comedy yeah i wanted to be able to like talk about more of my life than just like yo i'm r- rapping <laughs> <laughs> was that a line <laughs> <laughs> yo i'm rapping <laughs> yeah Maybe I, I think, yeah, maybe like this, there's a common theme of like, I've always wanted to like, you know, like not being told or, mm-hmm. you know, not being like pigeonholed. Yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah. All right. Now we have to pivot back to drinking and stuff. Let's pivot back to drinking. Did you ever drink while you were rapping? Of course. Well, did you ever embarrass yourself? Mm. You ever have a whoopsie doodle? You ever drink too much? No, that's the thing. I've never gotten into like drinking too much. I've always gotten, I've always like drank enough. I've gotten drunk. I've, you know, thrown up and stuff like that. But I've never like blacked out and went mm-hmm. crazy. There's been maybe like lapses. But no, I've always, alcohol has never been like too really interesting to me. It's mm-hmm. too like, the next day is just too rough. Yeah. It's just not worth it. What's your choice then? Mm-hmm. Mushrooms? I'll smoke a little weed sometimes mm-hmm. from time to time. I'll probably like, but I usually do it in downtime, like when I'm not working. I don't do anything before I go on stage. Oh, of course. Yeah. If I do drink now, I like uh, uh, sour beer. I love oh. sour beer. <laughs> but like, this is like a taste thing. So like, I, yeah. I'll have like two sour beers sometimes. Mm-hmm. That's enough. <laughs> I'll wake up with a dry mouth. And, <laughs> and just get some water. I won't yeah. like really be drunk. I just be like, I'm a little tart, you know. Yeah, a little tart. Oh, yeah. a little sour, uh-huh. a little sour mouth. <laughs> uh, mushrooms. I only did. Mu- I did mushrooms for the first time in November mm-hmm. in LA. Uh, and I, but I did four grams. Is that a lot? Fonz, what do you think? That's a lot. Yeah, it's a heroic dose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm fucking cool. What's like the normal amount? Fonz, what's the normal amount? <laughs> I mean, you can do like three and a half grams and like... Yeah, I see the dealer... Wits about you. The dealer mm-hmm. told... He was like, when we got him, he was like, look, if this is your first time, take... I, I suggest 3.75 is like that you'll get the full effect of it. Mm-hmm. And then every time you do it after that, you'll know that you are not getting, you know, like let's say you want a microdose, you want to go a little bit below, you'll know you're not, you've seen, yeah. you've climbed over the fence, yeah. you've seen what's back there, you know you can go there if you want, mm-hmm. you know. And I think th- he's like the first time that you do it, if you don't take a good, good dose, you get a little, you don't know if you're high or not, or you're, you might be a little irritated. This is, I, I've only done it once, and, but yeah, I, I, I saw, I, saw, I saw some things. What'd you see? You see God? Did he tell you why you couldn't make a ring? No, no. I think it was mostly mostly death stuff. Oh, mostly death stuff. <laughs> friends, uh, friends that have died. Um, me seeing my grandfather dead on the front porch and calling my dad about it, and then him like that. That was like the big. That was like the big. That was the bigger revelation. Um, was 
okay, so like, I when when my grandfather died, I told my dad. He you know called me was like, yo, your grand your dad's dead. I didn't really necessarily like this guy too much. Mm-hmm. He was he was cool, but he was like wild. He would call, he called my mom an Armenian prostitute once. Um, <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was like also I do I do have respect for him because he's an artist. He was really good at painting and drawing, and mm-hmm. you know I know that that's probably where I get like your creative what, whatever instincts. Is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Yeah, I think what what happened was like my dad, when we were at the funeral, I was like consoling everybody and he wouldn't go out and see him. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, um, I think when I was high on mushrooms, I realized I was like, oh, I was like the man in that situation. And I kind of sunned my dad. Mm -hmm. I had to be like more of the father figure in that in that role. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I get what the problem is. I haven't had a fear of of a father i haven't had like the you know i think that's good to have a fear of the father like uh, how can i put it like as a child you want to look to your dad and be like that's my dad and Mm -hmm. he could kick my ass and his i don't know i was gonna say something stupid like his penis is big or i I mean i'm sure your dad's penis is that's podcast that's that's weird hot take podcast stuff. Uh, <laughs> this is, again, this is not a hot take show. This it's all is a all silly hot fun take shows. It's, it's all a about silly hot fun take. time show. <laughs> but no, it's it's like you know you want to have like that fear of your dad, and I don't think like I don't think I really had that. Mm-hmm. It's more so like mm, I don't know how, like what my dad is doing. Well, or, it sounds like you were very independent, very young. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think from a young age, I just like maybe it was things my mom told me or just things things that I had noticed. I mean, you know, he did marry an 18-year-old when he was 36. What? Uh, but um what? Uh, what do you uh, talk about? Um so like as a kid, you see that and you're just like, yeah, my dad isn't really, I don't know if he's making the right choice. So like, you know, mm-hmm. so you grow up and you're just like you feel like your father's father. Yeah. You know? Okay. And I'm sure a lot of people probably deal with that out there and whoever's ever watching this podcast um you know especially I, I now thinking of it probably people with uh fathers or mothers that have addictive personalities right mm-hmm. you know because you're seeing your the person who's supposed to be like taking care of you and being your authority figure you know mm-hmm. doped up or yeah that's yeah, tough yeah I'm that's sure. tough yeah uh wait your father married an 18 year old how old were you about like 10 oh okay why is that like oh better <laughs> well i mean like what if you were also 18 oh no yeah no how old was your mom when she had you 21 well that's young that's not that young not in azerbaijan but yeah it's yeah like young but it's not that young in azerbaijan azerbaijan yeah where is it north of iran oh yeah oh. you're iranian i didn't oh, know you were I'm iranian not... <laughs> no i'm not a Ar- iranian i'm a Azerbaijani. Oh, is that a country? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's what you got to keep right there. That's what you got to keep. You see what I have to do? I have to go up on stage and then I have to talk about this shit to audiences. And they don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but I have to do it because I have a weird name. And it wastes like two minutes of my set. Rufat's not a weird name. Uh, I guess I've never yeah. known another Rufat. <laughs> You're the only Rufat I've ever met. That's like the, that's like actually the thing that I uh, well, I'm going off on a tangent here, but like yeah, talk, talk, having to go up to audiences and t- tell them where I'm from, like I just don't feel like doing it sometimes. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. But then like sometimes I feel obligated, and it just ruins everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get that. Um, that's a luxury, I guess, that I have. I don't have to go up and be like, I'm a part Italian. You know what I mean? But also, I think you don't have to do it. I think people, I think the time has changed enough that you can just go up and start talking about whatever you want. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but then there's, you know, there's a part of like, you know, your your, your history and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I got, yeah. I got, um, I was in a, I was like in a national, like a book thing that like my story got, yeah, it was a little short story because of where I'm from. Yeah, a little immigrant story. You know, you got to juice these executives <laughs> for all it's worth. <laughs> Juice them, baby. Juice, Juice them. them. Make them cry. Why not? I'm a little poor war child. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to my comedy. <laughs> I make war fun. <laughs> war. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, 
So you saw death on mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of death. A lot of yeah. death. Yeah. Okay. And at, at, at a point where, because it, it, it took a while to kick in for me, but at one point I felt, this was a weird thing. I felt like I was in, like the, the whole experience was being streamed and people were watching it. Mm -hmm. And like, I was in a sim, kind of like a simulation. And like, if, if I didn't, if I died in a simulation, I died in real life, and then my profile picture would turn black on all my social media. It was weird. It was a, that was like the. I was like, we gotta get off this beach, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling Keith, I was like, we gotta get off this beach. <laughs> and then you think that when you're on mushrooms, you're like at an elevated mind state. But then I said, I told him, I was like, is there fentanyl in those mushrooms? <laughs> and he's like, he's like, no. What are you? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> what did your friend feel was he just like having a nice time oh, we, no 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 we had a good like we had a good time we had a good time like mm -hmm. uh i think uh, yeah i think we went down some places because there was like a po portion of it where i was kind of like preaching yeah yeah but then i went down into like yeah like i i didn't know how to i wanted to pee and i didn't know how to open up my belt loop mm. Yeah, there's like a there's like a portion when you're on this like high, yeah, and like this like you feel like you're you're it's kicking it's kicking, and then there's like this at least this is at least this is for me with this portion where it's this low, and you feel like everything is connected, but like in a creepy like CIA mm -hmm. FBI type of way, <laughs> <laughs> like they've plotted against me. <laughs> <laughs> at least for me i was just like they are plot they because i was in la and i was like they bring people out in la to kill them all the time <laughs> this is where this is where reagan got his start this is where oj killed nicole this is where kanye went crazy i know they brought me out the surveillance <laughs> <laughs> I was going through it. <laughs> but then we got out into the road and it was nice. I like the lights. Yeah, the lights are pretty. Santa <laughs> the Monica? The lights are really oh, nice. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would you do them again? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> I want to, I, I, uh, I, um, I want to do that large of a dose about once every year or so. Okay. Yeah. Just to kind of like. Yeah. Reset a little bit. Oh, it's a resetting thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I hope you do it. Yeah. That sounds lovely. Yeah, it's a lot. You got to be, you know, got to be prepared. I've only done little micro doses. How was that that's for it. you? I felt nothing. Mm, that's what you warned me about. <laughs> <laughs> I got it for free, so I'm not worried about it. You got to do it, enough but... micros to where you. Yeah. I'm going to the beach tomorrow. Maybe I'll take a micro dose. Okay. I thought you were going to be like, I'm going to the beach tomorrow. <laughs> Let's do four grams. No <laughs> way. Do it. I got spots tomorrow night. I can't do I that. think, what's it called? I think Ethan and I might go to the beach tomorrow. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just hit me up because I got the car. Oh, yeah, fun. We're yeah, gonna yeah. Go to the beach. We're going to drive down to... Anybody who wants to come to the beach? Yeah, I know. This podcast <laughs> will be out in two weeks, so <laughs> you can't find us. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think we're going to Fort Tilden. Okay. If you want to go, where they have that little snack shack. I like. I don't want to be away from food. Fort Tilden is that near Jacob Reese? Yes, Jacob Reese Beach. That's the so one it's we're Jacob going to. Reese. Yeah, we're going to Jacob Reese. Yeah, that's Maybe what we're, we're doing. Just all going to Jacob we Reese. should all just go to Jacob Reese. Yeah, because they have a little. They have ice cream. You got a car? I got a car. Oh, okay. Oh, we drive on down. Yeah, all right. Going early. It's going early. Be nice. Okay, then you know we'll, we'll discuss. Do you wear a speedo? I feel like you would wear a speedo. Mm -mm. No. No, but I'm. I I bought these uh, crazy. Uh, these crazy swim trunks by this guy named Little Cool, and uh, <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course, <laughs> and they're not speedos, but they're they're like it's a lot, but I really like them. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I won't make fun of them because knowing you, everybody will be a wearing running them. short guy though. I was I usually just would go like swimming in running shorts. In running shorts? Yeah, they're you know air air um what's what's the what's the dry fit dry fits the material so like it dries pretty quickly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you just hang it up and it like dries. <laughs> you're not supposed to put it in the dry. Oh, you're not? No. Don't put your dry fit in the dry. I do that all the time. I do it, but I also send out my laundry. So whatever those ladies do, that's mm, what I'm getting. See that I'm I'm I I have to do my own laundry. Yeah. Well, I would you get care about so upset when my mom would do my laundry. <laughs> oh, I would get so upset. Well, we're fine. This has been a very enlightening that's it. conversation. 
Well, now it's where I ask if there are any stories we didn't get to. Oh, okay. Do you have any stories? Any more stories? More like drunk stories? Drunk, masturbation, drug. <laughs> What's a good masturbation story? I don't know. Have I'm you ever been caught? Yeah. By who? <laughs> Do I have to be honest? Yes! This whole time uh, you've been like, I want to be my authentic God. self. You don't have to answer anything you don't want to answer. But trust me, your mother will not find this podcast. Father, grandfather. Father, grand, both of them? Not at the, at same, the same time, time no. <laughs> two That's di- and wild. two different sides, two different sides. Mom's grandfather and then just dad. And then I think like two weeks after I caught my dad. Oh, see, that's just yeah. boys being boys. <laughs> that's not that <laughs> that's embarrassing. That's what I did when I caught him. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> How old were you? Oh, I was like a, in high school at that time. Oh, that's fine. That's cool. You hey. were masturbating in high school? Isn't that against God? Oh, if you want to talk about this, dude. <laughs> I, have n- I have not masturbated and watched pornography more than when I was a Christian. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It is, it's the only way to make it through that <laughs> celibate, abstinent. What are you going to do? Go to Bible study? Yeah. Oh Isn't that like, it's all, that's a religion all about repression. I know. I know. And you know, I'm all about like self-control. I think self-control is good. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, I mean, a lot of what we do in stand-up is self-control. Yes. The, the, you know, writing and performing and, mm-hmm. like, you know, it's all, all on you. But, um, Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. I was really honest today. I'm proud you of did. myself. <laughs> you were very honest. Like, you were some, an honest Like some sweet things boy. that I'm very like embarrassed yeah. to say. Uh, really? Yeah. It's embarrassing. What, the, the masturbating thing is embarrassing? No. Okay. Getting caught by <laughs> two generations of men. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they caught you and they were like, ah, that's my guy. No, you know? I think my grandfather, he 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 told my mom and then he, he pulled me out back. He's like, when you're going to get around a real woman, it's not going to work if you keep doing this. What? Yeah. What a wild thing to say. And he's right. I can't get it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm flaccid and I'm <laughs> sterile. <laughs> Sterile? What happened to sterile? I'm just joking. It's a joke I make. <laughs> but not about the flaccid part. The flaccid part is <laughs> My dick's small. I'm just flaccid. I'm... You are being incredibly honest, yeah, I'm Rufa. Just being so honest. <laughs> All right. Well, Rufa, where can people find you? Uh, I guess a good place is like, what, Instagram? R-U-F-A-T-C-A-M-P, Rufat Camp. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. A nickname somebody gave me back in the day. Just, that's cute. Yeah. All right. Follow him. He's a delight. Go see him live. You have a show, right? Every Tuesday? Every Tuesday, Scorpion Records, 792 Underdonk Avenue. Well, that's a fun name, Underdonk. Underdonk. Yeah. Go to Underdonk. Mm-hmm. Do it. Come through. Thanks for doing the podcast, Rufat. Thanks for being so honest. What a guy. <laughs>